Did you not hear that? Did you not hear the motion? Okay. Great, Councilor Jang, we just called uh, the meeting to order. Thank you for speaking up. And we uh, have a motion on the floor that we are to uh, approve the agenda. Councilor Paul moved the agenda as posted on the board docs with the exception that she's removing item 5.05 because that's on the deliberative agenda uh, for the full council meeting later in night. So that's, and that was seconded by Councilor Hightower and we were just voting on that when you spoke up. So you're well-timed. Yes, all right, yes, I vote yes. Good. You vote yes, okay, great. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> motion carries unanimously. We have a Board of Finance agenda. Um, is there any member of the public uh, here that wishes to speak to the Board of Finance? I'm not seeing any pickers on that. Is there anyone online? Yes, Sharon Busher. Okay, Councilor Busher. Um, Yes, good evening. Thank you. Um, I want to speak to the item um, where you're going to be doing the overview of the budget. And I wanted to just um, say as a citizen of Burlington, I'm hoping that many will um, take advantage of the meetings that you're having over the next uh, week or so. Um, and I, I wanted to comment on a few things. One is that at this time, from the slides that are in the um, your agenda, it appears that the gap, anticipated gap, I know it's closing a little bit, um, but was $2.2 million. And my understanding is that department heads were given um, the mandate to uh, try to come in with a budget that would help reduce that gap um, without really cutting any essential services. And um, from the slide, it looks like we're now down to about a $1 million gap. My understanding also is that in reserve are some ARPA funds so that if indeed a department is not able to accomplish the goal, um, those funds would be used only on an emergency basis to make sure that we sustain um, or we have a budget that does no harm. Um, my understanding also is that the unknown is um, where you will land with the union negotiations. But from my past experience, I know that a budget includes at least uh, sets aside some anticipated um, percentage of monies um, and anticipation of a negotiation and a settlement. And I'm hoping that what I see on the slides is such a budget and that it would only change if indeed the negotiations exceeded what you anticipated. So um, I'm appreciative of, of, of the information you're sharing. Um, I look forward to a time where you will have more information regarding the revenue that actually um, has come forward. Um, once again, a little greater than you anticipated is what I read from some slide. Um, and I'm hoping that by the end of May, um, there would be a budget that people could really understand. Um, the last thing, Mr. Mayor, is that Will the citizens of Burlington be aware of what is left out of the budgets from the various departments? Um, in other words, you know, they're presenting things, um, but in order to accomplish your goal, there have to be some, um, some re rearrangement or, um, in order to do that. And, Will the at least Board of Finance and the citizens who listen be made aware of how they were able to accomplish your goal? Um, and I know you don't answer those questions, but I would be interested at some time to know the answer. Thank you very much. Great. Um, thank you, um, former Councilor Busher. Uh, nice to hear from you. And uh, I do think a lot of what you're raising, we will get into in the discussion of the budget. Um, which is coming up shortly. So um, I'm gonna, is there anyone else online that would like to, like, I don't think there's anyone, any, any other? 
members of the public wishing to speak to the Board of Finance, I'm going to close the public forum and I'm going to move to our consent agenda. Excuse me. Um, I have one motion regarding the consent agenda. Uh, move the consent agenda as indicated on the board docs. Second. Great. Any, any discussion of the consent agenda? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And we have uh, adopted the consent agenda. So this now does bring us to um, 4.01, which is the general fund budget update, which we started two weeks ago, but did not get very far into. Um, and Catherine has this loaded up. Are you able to share your screen? Share it, yes. Um, well, I, um, let's, uh, um, sure, I'll do some over, overarching points just to kind of set the stage and, um, uh, hand it over to, um, to, to Catherine. So, whoa. I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to fix that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got the, so I'm going to use uh, the, the screen my screen from uh, what's up on board docs, um, which is a slight modification of what was posted two weeks ago, but it's a you know, very similar document. Um, the, uh, here are the, the challenges. You know, this, we went into this, we've been talking for some time. We think this is a particularly challenging budget year. Um, some uh, specific unique elements of it are the inflation, which we really have not been dealing with, dealt with uh, any time in the last decade, anything like this. Um, pandemic really impacted revenue shortfalls. We're still uh, certainly the fiscal year that um, we're currently in. We're still seeing impacts in some areas. Uh, it seems things seem to be getting better. For example, uh, like parking revenues, um, we're no longer down 50%, but we still are down 30% uh, in, in some you know, key parking um, in the garages, for example. Um, so we're not, we're not out of that. Um, uh, we are trying to move away and we got through, I think it is important to remember as we talk about this budget that we essentially got through last year's budget challenge by a heavy reliance on federal funds, about six and a half million dollars. We're trying to cut that way back this year. Um, and we have this uncertainty that was just referenced about the contract negotiation. So of course we have, we are, we are of course, um, as we talked about before budgeting, uh, for a, a, a cola, the question is just in this time of volatility, um, is it, are we going to be able to bring in where we've been expecting or not? We have had some, I think, uh, executive session discussion about our, our assumptions. Um, here are our, you know, I've always found it helpful in these budget sessions to, to try to speak at kind of the, kind of, the, the, the principles, the kind of guiding thinking um, as we approach this, I think it's, I think it's not too late to, um, if, to take feedback on these principles if, if people feel like we're missing something or uh, don't have some sort of emphasis right. Basically, the way we approach this uh, since Town Meeting Day and the vote um, against the tax increase is to um, uh, you know, we're, we're working within the constraints that we have within the existing uh, tax ceilings. We are not planning on going back for, for another uh, another vote, as has sometimes happened in the past uh, when um, increases have passed. We're, we're, we're living within the, the tax uh, the tax ceilings that we have in the various different taxes. We are looking to avoid layoffs and furloughs of uh, state employees, as has been our posture throughout the, the pandemic period. We have focus cuts, um, uh, we're looking to focus some on non-personnel budget lines as much as possible. Um, we have few, if any, kind of new initiatives built into the, to the structural budget. This I think is probably overstated to say there's none, but very few uh, new initiatives built into the structural budget, as I think I mentioned briefly last time. Um, I do think there's opportunity because of our various one-time monies, however, to continue to make strategic investments. Um, we will, um, and that's what the next bullet essentially says, um, we can use new and recovery-related, you know, respond to emerging concerns with uh, just one-time 
ARPA funds and the substantial unassumed balance funds that we uh, continue to have. Um, we uh, are going to continue to invest heavily in addressing the, the climate emergency and in significant part through expanded DED efforts. Um, we have been talking about this some. I'm not sure we have a whole lot more to say about that tonight, but I think it is important to remember that sort of an adjacent discussion. And we are, of course, uh, there is a resolution tonight that we would uh, be continuing to advance those through kind of non budgetary ways through new regulatory um, interventions. Uh, we, uh, I think there is some reason to be hopeful that we are going to pass this budget and that there may be budget amendments over the course of the year that allow us to, um, uh, that, that improve the budget um, and maybe even improve the budget in some kind of ongoing structural way uh, as the new staff that we have hired to seek out um, federal grants as they get on the ground and, and uh, uh, start to um, do their work. Um, hopefully, we will be coming back to you with, and and that is one of the things actually that's gone on. Why things aren't as bad as we thought they might be in March is that um, there is already some additional grant money that, that we're banking on now that we weren't able to do in March, um, and so hopefully that kind of trend will will, will continue. Um, and then um, just the last point again, mentioning the uncertainty about the union budget. We we may we're going to have an executive session and. 45 minutes about where we stand with the uh, uh, collective bargaining agreements. Perhaps uh, I think for some unions, we are getting to the point where we're starting to exchange financial terms and um, we may have a better, uh, I'm hopeful we will have a better sense of where we are before we get to the binding votes in, in June. Um, uh, so um, that will, hopefully that will, that uncertainty will be a little bit less by the time we actually have to take action on this budget. Um, so meeting the challenge, um, uh, why don't you take it over from here, Catherine, since you kind of oversaw a lot of this work. Sure. Um, as we mentioned, um, with the result of the vote in town meeting day, uh, we went back to all departments, um, and asked them to, uh, help us address in a proportionate way, the $2.2 million hole in the budget. Um, department heads did work hard to do that and um, made up about half of that through um, either additional revenues or through cuts to vacant positions or operating expenses. Um, there are not cuts to services in the budgets that you will see um, over the four marvelous nights. Um, and it is not explicitly clear, um, I see from uh, Sharon Busher's questions, and probably some of the rest of you have this too, um, but what we will see is a balanced budget that other billion dollars um, has been made up with some of the other changing assumptions that you'll see, um, things like um, property taxes going in our favor with fewer um, changes being made there with some pilot numbers increasing um, and things like that. As you know, um, when we came and asked for uh, the tax increase, that is at an extremely early point in the budget process. And a lot of those numbers have shifted and you'll see those starting on Wednesday night. Um, the first draft of the budget is at $92 million. Last year's budget was about 88.5 for point of reference. Um, and just to reiterate, we are not planning layoffs or furloughs at this point in the process. Um, again, talking a little bit about ARPA, this is what you will see included for ARPA in the budget. Uh, we've talked a lot about the 1.2 million um, that we'll use uh, for FY23 for equity. And then there's about 550,000 for a combination of uh, continued business support as well as con constituent support. And those are for some of those new costs as we are phasing them into our structural budget. Um, we have talked a little bit about this before, so we won't dwell on it. Um, 
We are also proposing that we put $2 million of ARPA money aside into a revenue replacement reserve that we would only use if we need it. Um, and that is um, to give us a little bit of a cushion because we have built this budget um, assuming that our revenues, not just the big five revenues that we talk about, property tax, pilot, uh, gross revenue, local option, and franchise fees. But really, um, this revenue replacement fund is probably more for things like um, DPW and parks. And I'm looking at our friends, the department heads over there, because they are the departments that have um, the most departmental revenue. And they're um, some of the places we've seen the biggest hit. And I'm thinking about parking revenues, which the mayor talked about, and also um, some of our waterfront revenues haven't quite rebounded yet, but they're on their way. Um, as we mentioned, and we we're just gonna keep beating this drum, things are still uncertain. I thought by my third budget, like I'd have this thing nailed, but it's um, the fact that we are still in the middle of these union negotiations, um, so because we have not discussed financial terms with all of them yet, we're continuing to use the assumptions we've talked to you all about. And our next step, this is the week where we start our four marvelous nights. So I hope to see many of you on Wednesday night and then three big nights next week. And then we have a couple of work sessions in June and then we'll be passing the budget. And that is what we have to share with you tonight. We are happy to take your questions and any discussion. Yeah, first question is on the fourth slide um, around the proportional cuts and just a clarification on uh, what the ask and our treatment was of BPD and REIB. That's different. That's filled out. Um, basically, um, with the BPD budget, we, because um, we have so many kind of programmatic uh, ambitions, uh, uh, creation of new um, uh, <clears throat> just think about the BPD budget and when we get into it next week, we'll have another slide that really lays this out. We essentially are continuing to hold the pre-pandemic, um, uh, pre, uh, the, the FY, what was that, FY 20 budget with um, some inflation continues to essentially be the chunk of money that we have allocated to, to the BPD with the exception of the functions that were taken out of the, the BPD, primarily the parking, that whole parking. Um, uh, the division is no longer worth that much. But as with last year, we um, are uh, trying to continue to have that sort of that, uh, that amount of money is basically available. Um, we, didn't, we have not cut it. We are allocating it to many different things than what used to go to between the uh, CSOs, the CSLs, the uh, crisis response, uh, RFP, the urban park rangers, um, and uh, several other um, kind of new things that we've talked about. Um, that so it, it, there's a lot less money being spent um, really on officers. Uh, that's exacerbated by the vacancies there. Um, but that's the way we, that's the assumption we, we've held there. With REIB, um, basically, there's a lot of moving parts in that budget as, as well, given um, staffing changes uh, that um, were um, a large growth in, in staffing that there's been over the last two fiscal years. Uh, and the, whereas we said to the other departments, we're going to cut, try to cut back the percentage to that 2.2, we, we said there, all of the structural budget to basically 
no, no cuts there. And that's what we're going for. Sorry. So what you're saying is BPD and RAB are different in that neither one of them are getting any proportional cuts? That's right. They're essentially level funded, and you will see how that's been reorganized when you see the departmental budgets. It's also worth pointing out that this, I am realizing, is slightly misleading in that there are some other departments that were given this. And for instance, Mary here, but the library is a good example. Their cuts were small, were pretty small. It was about fifty thousand dollars. The only cut that was available to them was a staff member, and in the end, we it was our recommendation that that was too painful, so we asked her to add it back. So there's no cuts to the library. So you'll see, so like there are a couple of things like that. Um, departments that came to us with cuts and we were like, no, too painful, please add it back. So while every department was, besides BPD and REA IB came to us with cuts, we didn't take every cut or every recommendation that was offered to us on the first try. And then, thank you. And then a comment, which I made last time, but I want to make sure to say it again, because that wasn't true of the last budget that I saw. Because we get them in PDFs, it's really hard for us to do any of the maps of comparison, or at least last time we went through this process to get them as PDFs. Um, so again, it would be really helpful to see pre-pandemic numbers, last year's numbers, and this year's numbers compared. And to the extent that they can have the percentages, if we are getting PDFs, that would also be helpful. I put them in Excel and I started putting <laughs> them all in Excel for almost everything there for Wednesday night. I'm not sure how far back pre pandemic it goes, but I will double check this thing and let you know. And if you are not getting what you need, just let us know. But you should be able to play around with all of that now. Thank you. For yep. Councilor Jay, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of questions. And uh, one is related maybe a little bit from Councillor Bush, Bush's question about the unassigned fund balance. I was wondering, maybe not today, if we can uh, do a cross comparison over the past five years. You know, how has been the health of our unassigned fund balance, um, you know, at the end of every budget? And also, when would you know this year, when would we have the information these are the funds? that were not assigned to any activities or services. This is a, I'm sorry, this is a great question, Councillor Jang. Um, it's, uh, we have decided that we were going to add on the last evening, um, Thursday, May 19th, a presentation on both ARPA and the um, unassigned assigned fund balance because those are questions that people have had. And so that'll be a new budget presentation. And I think your question about looking at the balance over the past five years is a good one as I'm designing that presentation. So I'll make sure that is included as well. Wonderful, um, thank you. And I think, uh, you know, one more question about the creation of a new department. And, you know, I think one of, one slide here was talking about if any will have only few initiatives. Does it include the new department that will be created? So, yes, the, um, the you're asking about the this new department we've talked about that kind of codifies the business support that we've had for the last few years. Um, it does include that. It is not why it, it, they're not new initiatives in the sense that it's essentially what we've been doing for the last couple of years. Now we're not um, we're projecting a big further uh, expansion uh, of that, um, and we are. That is an area where we're um, a significant part of the budget is coming from uh, ongoing uh, kind of economic um, recovery uh, funds, ARPA funds, as as was on that earlier slide. Okay. The um, unassigned fund balance discussion, we will, you know, it's a, we definitely have those annual figures and 
I'll show it that way. Uh, I do think what you will what will show is that we've for um, some time been um, really up towards the the way our unassigned fund balance policy is written. It says essentially that we're targeting having a ten percent unassigned fund balance in excuse me in reserve. It can go as low as five percent and as high as fifteen percent, but ten percent is the target. And we're above that target. So I do think there is an opportunity there um, with to make, especially when we have, yeah, I, I think, you know, we'll get into the discussion next week, but I think there's an opportunity there for some uh, one-time investments that get us close, closer to that 10% target and to help us get some uh, strategic uh, investments. Wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you. And sorry if I sneeze or anything. So this is the last question. And um, Catherine and Miro, I was wondering if as part of the presentations as we move forward to also you know, identify what are the positions that have been advertised over the, let's say, past two years that have not been filled by department to mm -hmm. gather the data, how many in, let's say, airport or airport is a different but just by department, how many positions that have not been filled yet in the past 12 months or 24 months? I think it will give us a sense whether or not we need to pursue it or those job requirements to be you know, divided within the staff that exists already and try to see if there are mechanism of saving resources there as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jenny. Uh, we'll, we'll follow up on that idea. <coughs> Any any further further discussions? Any other? So we have a number of counselors here. Any other counselors have any any questions at this point? Hello. Oh, sorry, um, so Councilor Bergman. Go ahead. Um, would you provide uh, details on the uh, constituent initiatives and the council initiatives? I forget which slide it might be. The next one there. I mean, I, I would just like to yeah. constituent support, and if there. Are, just, just you know, being clear about the piece. Uh, um, in terms of the cuts, it would be helpful, maybe it's only in a narrative, but to understand the challenges that departments are facing to maintain services within this budget. And I say that in the context of being a real pain to, to, to department heads, some of them who are sitting here and I keep pushing and they say, I got no money. And I wanna really understand that and have that laid out the case for um, the need for all of our uh, employees it really needs to be made, I think, in a much stronger and clearer way. So that will help do that. Uh, and then um, with regard to the new business support uh, officer department, I would like also in a, in a narrative uh, to have the have the responsibilities. And I'm not assuming, I, I don't know whether you're doing this or not, so this may be something you've already built in. Um, clarifying the responsibilities and which in uh, CEDO's charter are going to remain with CEDO and then the legal basis for creating a department that already has uh, you know, those assi responsibilities assigned uh, to CEDO under the charter. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, seeing if there's no other takers, um, you have some other business to do tonight. So I'm gonna move towards adjourning, uh, sorry, closing this part of the, closing this part of the uh, meeting. Um, and we will uh, look forward to resuming the budget discussions with you all in more detail um, in a couple of days. I'll now move to 5.01, which is um, a uh, authorization to submit 2022 Burlington One Year Action Plan and then the 2019 Burlington One Year Action Plan. It's a CEDO item. Uh, Brian Pine is here. If needed, uh, how would the board like to have else? That's all right, there. I'll move to recommend the city council approve the attached resolution as found on board docs. Thank you. Is there a second for that? Second by President Paul. Discussion? 
Okay, seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 5.02. Um, this is for authorization to accept grant funds for low income house old water assistance program. Um, and uh, one of the money see this off for us, yeah. uh, or Megan. Um, Great. I'm going to turn to Division Director Megan Moyer, and now we also have Jess Lavalette here as well. And I'm going to pass it to Jess, as she is the one who has been most involved in uh, working on these um, assistance programs for our customers. Hey, hi, everyone. Um, we are seeking authorization to participate in LIWAP, which is Low Income Household Water Assistance Program. It helps eligible households um, pay their water and sewer bills. It's income-based and run by the Department of Family, uh, Children and Family Services. It's a new program launched at the end of last year. Um, and we're very excited to participate. We've been participating in every other program that's been available for our customers. Um, and participation has varied across the board depending on the requirements of the program. It's, I'm unsure how many of our residents will participate in this one. Um, it's six, the income-based requirement is one of the more strict of the programs, um, but we've had robust participation in some of the other income-based ones. Um, we don't have our accounts correlated with income data, but I am hopeful. We have been spreading the word about our particip participation in these partner programs. And once we have the approval tonight, we will be um, advertising this one as well as our recent participation in um, VHAP. And we're, we're doing this in advance. We are uh, similar to BED, uh, although a slightly more delayed schedule, lifting our uh, disconnection moratorium. So we're gonna be reaching out to customers, letting them know about their balances, letting them know about their options as well as the option to uh, set up a payment plan with us. And anybody who's on a payment plan and stays current with that is certainly not gonna be disconnected, but um, we have had this uh, disconnection moratorium for well past when the state required it, um, you know, as a com compassionate effort towards our rate payers. <clears throat> yeah, thank you both. Um, why don't we go to the board now? How, how, would, uh, how would the board like to proceed? There's a Paul. Make a motion to approve that uh, take the action this reference of the docs. Great, thank you. Second by Councilor Hightower. Discussion, discussion before vote. Yes, uh, yes, yes, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. And this is a question about you know what will be your staff participation into managing this program. Will it require a new position, or you will be able to do it within what you have? We can do with what we have. The program is administered by the state. And so they do all of the applicant verification and qualifying them. Um, what happens on our end is we will get an email from the state with the um, resident's address and they ask for their account balance and proof of the water bill. So it's very similar to what we did um, the Vermont COVID arrears assistance program where we received notice that someone applied and then we just submitted um, their recent account balance and then we received money. And lastly, because of the income requirement, how many people do you think in Burlington will take advantage of this? It's uncertain. I don't know. I will say that, um, and I was looking at this before the meeting, um, VRAP, which is the rental assistance program, its eligibility was 80% of the median household income. So that was renters and it was 80%. And we have 28 participants in that. Um, this one is open to anyone, homeowners and renters, but it's 60% of the state median. Um, we had the most robust participation with VCAP, but that didn't have um, any income base. It was just, you had to attest that you had COVID um, related financial hardship. And those numbers were um, well over a hundred in each program. I'm, I, sus I suspect it may change mm -hmm. once we let people know that there's right. this connection moratorium, right? People haven't necessarily had a huge incentive to enroll in these programs. Um, even though we've let them know that they should take advantage. Uh, so I'm hoping that will encourage anybody who is eligible to leverage um, these programs. But let me now ask the question differently and sorry, Mr. Mayor. And this question is specific to overall in the city without even pandemic related hardship. What has been the rate of some people having the inability to pay like in terms of percentage, 5% less than that? Like over, it's increased like our our 
past due arrearage balances has increased, I would say, over the pandemic by about 12%. Um, a mixture, not all residents, that's just, I didn't break it out by class, but it varies from month to month. Um, but overall, it's been about 12%. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, other, I'm not seeing uh, further hands, further questions. I think we're we have a motion and a second, right? So um, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you all. Uh, 5.03, reclassification of one role within the Fletcher Free Library. Um, and we've got Tony and Mary here uh, to help us with this as needed. Um, are we you ready, support ready for a motion here? Or okay. That's right there. Um, I guess I have a question. I know we got an email a while ago from AFSCME asking, I guess generally how, the, and I looked at the chart, but it's still not clear to me that there was no full-time staff at the North Branch Library. And I guess I'm wondering how rethinking the org chart is in line or not in line with that step, like staffing the North Branch definitely. Mary, did you hear that question? Are you able to respond? Yes. Um, well, the North, the New North End branch is only open 16 hours per week. And right now we do have um, admin that are staffing it. So it really hasn't had a, a huge impact on staffing. I do have an um, an email out to CAO Shad. Sorry, Catherine, I don't mean to throw you out there. Um, and uh, we are having some conversations back and forth um, about what we can do moving forward. But right now, we, I mean, since it's been open in December, we haven't really had any staffing issues um, because we have had uh, reduced use here at the main branch. So does that answer your question, Councillor Hightower? I think so. Um, maybe the general question then is just like how folks are feeling about splitting their time, whoever is doing some of those 16 hours at the New North End branch. Yeah, right now it's it seems to be working well. I mean, I, I would love to be able to come back and in six months to a year and say, no, we need we need more um, because the um, business has picked up, if you will, uh, but we're not we're not quite there yet. Great, thank you. Other discussion or motion on the side? Yes, the man. Councilor Jay, go ahead. Yep, along those lines, thank you, Councilor um, Hightower for asking that question. And I feel like we need to look at this into the perspective of the bargaining that will be coming and to expect a question or a requirement from us to me um, to have like a fully staff dedicated just there. And also, I know, um, um, Director, that you know, Director Denko, that you know, you you know that expanding the hours has already been requested by some members of the new North End. So basically, I think we have an opportunity right here, as the budget process is about to unfold, to make sure that we extend the hours one, and also to have a fully staff there for more than sixteen hours a week. It's just a thought and to look into the details will, will be much appreciated. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jang. It, it definitely um, is another one of the moving parts, I think, in this budget. And uh, yeah, we hope to expand it too. So thank you. Okay, um, more questions or a motion? Yep, I go ahead, Councilor Jang. Yep, I move the motion as indicated on board doc. Okay, seconded by President Paul. Further discussion? We'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And that brings us to 5.04 uh, reclassification of two clerk treasurer positions in the HR clerk treasurer office. Um, Catherine, do you want to summarize this briefly? Uh, I will say briefly, this is um, one customer service associate position that 
be used to split with parks. The employee is staying in parks for health reasons, leaving CT. Um, and in order to open the building back up for lunch, uh, we need to make that a full time position. Um, the other position is the new position. Um, it's a licensing associate and police commission position. We have not been successful in recruiting for this at a grade 13. Um, we also put in some extra duties, including helping to cover the front desk. That brings it up to a 14, so we're asking for a reclass. And uh, we think we do have some internal candidates who would be interested at a grade 14. President Paul. Thank you. Uh, the motion to recommend the council approve as the recommended action on the Great. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Council Hightower. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, Catherine for bringing this forward, and, and uh, uh, I'm hopeful. I think these are both needs that it's um, impacting uh, pretty significantly right now. It's I, I don't think about this building not being open. During the, maybe an hour, I think it's when a lot of people are able to get in here. Um, this will help address that. If this must change. <laughs> this police commission um, re remove class for that position. It's really problematic that this has been unfilled for a number of months now, and hopefully this uh, this gets done. So, um, any uh, Councilor Jane, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, you know, as part of this budget season was just wondering why now and why couldn't we wait until FY23 in order to bring this position forward? That's a, if I might, um, we are in a very unique position in this job market, Councillor Jang, where we actually have two temporary employees working in the uh, park treasurer's office. I'm not sure how long we can retain them in that capacity, and I didn't want to risk that for two months. So if, and we have the money for it in the CT uh, budget office, uh, in the CT budget. So given those factors in a sort of normal year for recruiting, I probably would have waited. But when we have good people who I think are going to apply for these positions, I didn't want to risk them getting other jobs, frankly. Yep. I am happy to support this right now, but I feel like as we move forward until July 1st to maybe freeze hiring until we have a better understanding of our, our financial stake. Yeah, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, further, further discussion. All those in, yeah, uh, yeah. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Right. Motion carries unanimously. Um, so 5.05 has been removed. So we're now on the 6.01, which is engineering, uh, design, um, marketplace, garage repair. I think we'd be good for the board to get a little um, uh, update on what's going on here. Uh, since we're not going to conversation. No. I'm Jeff Hatch, I'm with the Director of Marketing Traffic. Um, and we're here tonight to get uh, approval to fund engineering design work for the Marketplace Garage. Um, we did get in with Will Tanner uh, earlier in the year on about a $40,000 scale contract to do garage repairs. And as they began that project, they discovered that there was some more in depth repair that might cross over into the replace category. And also there's a brick veneer on the side of the building that they're trying to figure a way to get repaired, get stabilized. And we haven't been able to find a contractor for that. We talked to the engineers and basically said, well, we need to wrap this brick veneer work into this contract. So as a result, we went from about a $40,000 design contract to a $59,000 design contract. So now we're here to talk to you so we can get approval for this. And they are at the gate, ready to go with the bid documents. We need to get this on the street for construction to do it this summer. We want to get it done August, September, 
October time frame. Of course, it's a business season, we appreciate that. Uh, but it is urgent repair that needs to be done uh, sometime. Uh, as part of this, they've done a traffic control plan, which will limit the contractor to restricting the friction to not eliminating more than 80 spaces during construction. So it's less than 25% of the garage we come from this type of structure. So I think that's that's that high level. So questions? Yeah, the floor's open for questions. I don't think anyone else is thrilled and jumping up and down to do this, but it has to be done. So I'll make the motion to uh, take the actions recommended. Thank you, Councilor Jang. Second. Oh, okay. if I have one, good. <laughs> great. We got the second, but um, uh, great. Um, and um, Okay, I think that's probably enough. We'll have more discussion about the marketplace uh, marketplace garage in the future. So, uh, all those in, if, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And um, final item on the agenda is an authorization to execute a maintenance contract. For stormwater dredging and vegetation removal services. Another DPW item. Um, you want to speak to this? Yes, we have both Division Director Megan Moyer as well as our stormwater program coordinator, James Sherrard, to tackle this one. James, take it away. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, the city is lucky enough to have a number of stormwater systems that are treating our runoff here in the city, and a few of them are um, sediment capture systems. Uh, the short version of that is they gather a lot of the stuff that runs off our roadways and parking lots, etc., and captures them and holds it up. And that sediment builds up over time in these systems. So intermittently, they need to be dredged and cleaned out. A similar effort, although a little bit smaller, was done about five years ago. Um, but uh, two of these systems have never been cleaned since constructed. So we are looking to do a fairly large push in a dredging effort, um, treating cleaning both pond uh, 08 and its forebay, in addition to two uh, components of the Pine Barge Canal. So today we're asking for approval to execute, execute a contract with the uh, contractor that came in with the lowest bid for this particular effort. Great, thank you, James. Um, questions or motion? President Paul. Thank you, I'll make the motion. It's actually not on onboard docs, it's actually in the document. Um, which it doesn't really matter, but I don't know if you have that at some point. But anyway, there is a motion on page three, and I will make that motion. Unless you want me to read it. Perfect. I'm fine with, I'm fine with it, it's just that way. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for work on this. I think it's exciting that we're gonna improve this uh, as part of our, our maintenance, um, which has some residual benefits too for things that, I guess, is it just the same thing that also ends up improving the bike lanes or is it really? This, these, these are different stormwater detention facilities are usually outside the right of way, but uh, as you saw in the memo, some of these are uh, part of our agreement with EPA and the state on uh, the Pine Barge Canal, and so uh, we're pleased to do this maintenance that we need to do to preserve the lake. All right, without uh, objection, we are adjourned to the Board of Finance at 5 7 p.m. Came in on time.